All right. So again, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. My name is Tyler Havens. I serve the fraternity as the Associate Director of Chapter Services uh, out of the Central Office in Oxford, Ohio. Um, I have a very brief introduction of our uh, speaker uh, this evening, Noel Miller, uh, who serves as the District Director for the Gamma Sigma Chapter at the University of Maryland College Park and the Psi Chapter at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Yes, those are in two different provinces. Um, so uh, again, if you have questions, uh, as Noel is presenting, please feel free to type them in the chat box um, or unmute yourself uh, and, and ask aloud. Um, and with that, I'm going to go away and I'm gonna turn it over to Noel. Thanks, Tyler. Good evening, brothers. Welcome to the Strategic Planning Seminar. Tonight, we are gonna talk about how strategic planning can help your chapter achieve your goals and help your chapter align with the fraternity's strategic pillars. We're gonna do this by talking about strategic planning from a research and practice perspective. Before we dive in to the topic itself, let me give a brief introduction of myself. I am a 2008 initiate of Delta SIG, having started my chapter Pi Ta at Albion College my freshman year, um, initiated fall of my junior year. I'm the 2010 North Central Provincial Koi, and as Tyler mentioned, I'm district director for Gamma Sigma and Psi. Um, shout out to the Gamma Sigma brothers who jumped on tonight. Great to see you guys. I hold an MBA in corporate and competitive strategy, uh, which is where my love of strategic planning really started is in my graduate work. I am a PMI certified project management professional, having been in the industry for over eight years. I currently work at Land's End in Dodgeville, Wisconsin, and reside in Madison. I am a DNI corporate council member for Land's End, helping us on our council and our DNI journey as a company. I'm also a current board member of St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Middleton, Wisconsin, where I lead the long term uh, strategic planning committee for the church. Uh, and we're working on our strategic plan for the next five years right now. I'm also a former international board member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and I'm a wife, a mom, and an equestrian competing with our horses. Um, so let's jump right into the topic. What is strategic planning? Strategic planning is the process of defining an organization's strategy, directions, and making decisions to allocate resources in pursuit of that strategy. Strategic planning should include control mechanisms to guide the implementation of the organization strategy as well. So tonight we're gonna to talk about all of those things and how you can not only research them, which I'll share the research with you tonight, but also practice them in your chapter to have these skills as you enter the workforce. The outcome of your strategic planning process is an action plan with targeted key performance indicators for short-term and long-term performance. So there are seven elements that we're gonna talk about around strategic planning. Before we can build a strategic plan to improve our organization, we must understand what our organization desires to be. So the first three elements are really basic elements that should exist long-term for your organization, regardless of um, the, the items that you're gonna accomplish in the next five years or three years or one year, right? Those are your vision statement, an example of that from corporate life is to be the most trusted and valued customer-driven insurance company. Your mission statement, an example is to inspire, protect, and restore dreams. And your core values, again, an example from the same company, innovation, caring, agile, trustworthy, transparent, and passionate. Those are the core values that American Family looks for in its employees. Now that we know as an organization what our vision, mission, and core values are, we need to analyze where we are today in order to determine what actions we need to take to become that organization, that aspirational organization that fulfills the mission, vision, and core values. The way that we analyze where we are today is through a process of strategic analysis. This often takes the form of surveys for employees, key stakeholders, customers, it might be stakeholder interviews where you would talk to customers, employees, or again, partners in your business to understand what they believe your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats might be. 
Um, and then you take that information from those surveys, from those stakeholder interviews, and you perform a SWOT analysis. Now, there are many ways to, to undergo strategic analysis. Um, I'm going to focus on SWOT tonight because it's the most common and it's one that's easily applicable for our chapters. And we'll get into exactly how we do that later on. So SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And we'll go into a little more detail on and examples of those four items a little bit later in the presentation. Once the strategic analysis is complete, then you're really ready to jump into the work of strategic planning. At this point, because we're aware of what we want to achieve and where we are today, we build that plan. That plan is going to include action plans, what will be accomplished throughout the term of your strategic plan. When it comes to Delta Sigma Pi chapters, we write a strategic plan for every semester or twice a year. As a fraternity, we write a plan for five years. Uh, many companies write a strategic plan for five years, some even write them for 10 years. So that action plan would be what, what are we going to accomplish in this this full term, whether that's five years, 10 years, or in the case of a Delta SIG chapter, a semester. You're going to break that down into short term objectives, what needs to be accomplished either each year, each month. Um, some folks can even go as deep as each week to continue to be on track with your action plan as a whole. And you're going to need to write those short term objectives in the form of SMART goals. And we'll talk more about what SMART goals are and how you write them for your chapter. And then finally, um, you're going to have some long-term goals built into your strategic plan. And the, the long-term goals are really going to be the ultimate goals for your plan term. What are the big takeaways? What are the big things that you're going to say from this date to this date, we accomplished X, right? Um, your short-term objectives should directly correlate to those long-term goals and essentially roll up into them so that you're constantly making progress towards those long-term goals. And again, those are gonna be written as SMART goals. So we've talked about the elements of strategic planning. Let's look at strategic plans from a corporate perspective. In a corporate world, strategic plans are typically developed by the leadership of the corporation. That might be the C-suite, it might be the director, VP and, and, um, and C-suite team, <clears throat> but typically strategic plans are developed at that upper echelon of a corporation. Once the strategic plan is published, the organization's plan is a roadmap for decision-making throughout the rest of the organization. So for example, at Land's End in the project management office, every project that comes through our IT shop, we know how that relates back to the company's strategic plan, the company's mission, vision, values, and our, and our goals. Um, and those, uh, those items are used to to review and make a decision as to whether or not we move forward or invest the resources in any given project. They're used to weigh the opportunity cost of do we do project X, which only has a small impact on our strategic plan or do we do project Y, which has a larger impact. All of those things come into play as we're deciding as an organization where we head. In addition, um, team and individual goals throughout the organization should align with that corporate plan. So my individual goals for the year that I'm um, rated on at the end of the year, right? That mid-year mid review that I do with my boss and that end of year review that I do with my boss, the very goals that make up whether or not I receive um, potentially a bonus or a promotion, those are all directly aligned to our strategic plan as a company. So that strategic plan is really that North Star, that roadmap, that guiding light for us to move towards and make sure that all of our work is in alignment with that goal. So you see here on the right, um, again, that vision values, you, mission would be there in the, in the middle. Um, that really plays into and is supported by the strategic plan goals, right? So who we wanna be, what that aspirational vision is, what we believe shapes our deci decisions, that mission, those values. And then that strategic plan starts to set what we must achieve to get to that aspirational goal. On the bottom two uh, tiers of the pyramid, you see the action plan. And that's really where we as individuals or departments or projects come into play in a corporation. So the objectives 
are those smart specific outcomes or, or again, smart goals um, that are more at the department level, at the project level, that, that support that strategic plan, that support that values, that support that vision, right? And then those action steps are those baby steps or those daily or weekly things that, that we do to support <clears throat> those projects, to support those efforts by the company to accomplish our strategic plan, to become the cor corporation that we want to be, to make the impact that we want to make on the world, right? So again, it's it's a pyramid with those daily impacts, those daily actions, rolling up and impacting, building to being the aspirational company that you dream to be. And then finally, in corporate America, we measure our goals on a regular basis and the progress is reported out to our stakeholders. So as a publicly traded company, Land's End has a quarterly earnings call and that's one way that we measure towards our strategic plan. Um, internally, we have regular standups and town halls where we understand where we're at on, on an internal basis. Um, we get a weekly you know, report on where we're at in terms of sales. All of those sorts of things keep us as employees, as key stakeholders informed in the process and informed in our progress towards our strategic plan and goals. So how does this relate to the fraternity? Well, let's talk about it. So again, by research and practice, we're gonna take the research that we just talked about and take this into fraternity life so that we can see it and practice it as brothers. Our vision statement as a fraternity is to be America's foremost professional business fraternity. Our mission, all right, we're gonna have to do this a little bit differently. Sorry guys, this is some of the technical difficulties that caused us to be a little late. <clears throat> our mission is that Delta Sigma Pi is a professional business fraternity organized to foster the study of business in universities to encourage scholarship, social activity, and the association of students for their mutual advancement by research and practice to promote closer affiliation between the commercial world and students of commerce, and to further a higher standard of commercial ethics and culture and the civic and commercial welfare of the community. I'm sure all of you uh, recognize that. Our mission statement is our purpose, right? As, a, as an organization, that is what we strive to be. Um, and those are our aspirational goals. Our core values as an organization are leadership, diversity, service, professional training, and giving. And these are all easily accessible on our website, just like most corporate organizations. From a strategic analysis perspective, the Organizational Development Committee is responsible for executing the strategic analysis and recommending a strategic plan to the fraternity board of directors. The OD committee holds discussions and interviews with current board members, staff, and committee chairs to gather input they also look at you know, where we are in the Professional Fraternity Association and, and other inputs to be able to kind of build that SWOT analysis or build their strategic analysis to make recommendations to the board on what our uh, strategic plan looks like. So having done, right, having taken in what our mission, vision, and values are, having done their analysis um, in 2016, the last time that a strategic plan was done for the fraternity, um, our strategic plan had four pillars, member education, membership growth, membership engagement, and organizational excellence. Um, the OD committee is in the process right now of writing our strategic plan for 2022 through, I believe, 2026, um, if I did that math right. And so more, more to come uh, from that, but but right now, uh, since that's in process, just looking at our, our strategic plan that ends this year. So our strategic plan from 2016 to 2021, the specifics, the goals that were set, the objectives that were set, right? Those, those high level objectives that were set um, under member education were to provide leadership development training for collegiates and alumni chapter officers with at least 90% of chapters participating annually. And then to provide leadership development training for district directors with at least 90% of chapters served by a trained district director annually. Membership growth. 
our goals were to expand to at least 250 active campuses and to ensure that at least 90% of collegiate chapters have at least 30 active members. Under membership engagement, we want to engage 20,000 alumni annually as volunteers, donors, national event participants, supporters of chapters or national activities, and to, collect, and to cut collegiate member attrition rates by at least 50%. Finally, for organizational excellence, we're looking to enhance fraternity and leadership foundation relationships and foundation staff support models, as well as enhancing fraternity organizational structure and the staff support model. So why did I share all of that with you, right? I shared all of that with you and I took the time to go through the specifics of those four pillars because when we practice strategic planning, we should practice it just as it is practiced in a corporation, in a corporate setting. Just as the departmental and individual goals that are set within Land's End align with our strategic goals and strategic plan as an organization, so should your chapter's strategic plan align with the National Fraternity's strategic plan. So let's talk about what that looks like. From a strategic planning perspective, when we look to practice strategic planning, we do things a little bit differently within our chapters. Instead of a five-year strategic plan like the National Fraternity does, we do a strategic plan each semester. Based on what we just reviewed in terms of corporate strategic plans, that means that our strategic plans at the chapter level typically outline objectives and action steps and aren't necessarily looking at long-term goals because you're, you're writing one as frequently as you are. So a couple of questions for reflection and just think about these um, as, as your chapter. What level of CMP do you desire to achieve? What awards does your chapter want to pursue? And what impact do you wanna have on the campus or the community that you're based in? So those would be some foundational questions that you would ask to support your chapter's development of your strategic plan. Once you have those foundational questions and you have those things that you wanna look at from an aspirational perspective, then you're gonna look at engaging your stakeholders, right? We talked about in corporate America, once we know our mission, vision, values, which at a chapter level, we steal from the national fraternity. Once we know those things, then we turn to do that stakeholder, that, that strategic analysis where we engage with our stakeholders. And again, do that interview process or that surveying process and that SWOT analysis. So we're gonna do the same thing on a chapter level. You should be engaging your stakeholders and educating them in your strategic plan and the fraternity strategic plan as you look to build your plan for the next semester. So who are your chapter stakeholders? Why don't you guys throw into the chat and I'll have Tyler shout them out for me. Who do you think your chapter stakeholders are? Donors, brothers, members, officers. Absolutely. Okay. So I, yeah. So I heard I heard donors, brothers, members. The university. The university is a great one. Yep. I have a, another brother here in the room who shouted out pledges or yep. potential new members. Yeah. Parents are another stakeholder in our success. Yes. How about alumni? Did anybody throw alumni in there? They can they can fall under members. Fall oh, under members. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's let's put the put alumni there. All right. So those are all fabulous answers, right? Your your university, your chapter members, your executive committee, your chapter alumni, the local alumni, the parents of of your members, potential new members, right? All of those are great stakeholders for you to consider and include in your strategic planning process. So, so I encourage you to make that list of stakeholders for your chapter and then choose folks that on that, on that list who represent each of those buckets of stakeholders, right? So at Albion, um, we had 
great faculty member, great faculty brother involvement. And so we would always check in with at least one of our faculty brothers as we were doing our strategic planning, right? So checking in, whether it's sending a survey to all of your membership, sending a survey, including your alumni, including your faculty, faculty brothers, get their thoughts on the current state, get their thoughts on the national strategic priorities and how your chapter might plug into those. Ask them what their goals are for the next semester, including your general members, right? Even if you're not an officer, you should have some sort of goal or some sort of, um, of, um, of aspiration of what you wanna get out of Delta SIG in the next semester. Knowing what that is, is gonna make you stronger as a chapter and it's gonna allow your members to be more engaged. So getting those, those thoughts. This is a great opportunity to you know, have a discussion during chapter meeting. Again, you can do a survey. You might have your executive committee members um, take one of their committee meetings and talk about it with their committee members. All of those ways that you can get verbal and written communication back from your membership on these topics is gonna be helpful as you do your strategic plan. So once you know kind of everybody's thoughts and you've made them aware of the national fraternity's strategic priorities, then you're gonna be ready to analyze your chapter ops and see where your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats lie as a chapter. So a SWOT analysis um, looks at those four things. Strengths are internal items. So in your chapter, what strengths do you have? That can be items that set you apart. That can be great resources, right? Like brothers are our absolute greatest resource and you may have phenomenal um, marketing knowledge within your chapter. So your social media and your campus marketing um, program is, is super strong, right? Um, you may have a really phenomenal uh, faculty brother who helps you bring in new recruits from those freshman and sophomore classes. That's a really great strength to call out. Those things are going to be things that you're going to want to build on, focus on, enhance, right? Then you're going to have, again, internally in your chapter, what are your weaknesses? What are the areas that you want to improve? Um, in this COVID time frame, I've been talking to a lot of chapters who have said, you know, our recruitment process wasn't the greatest going into COVID and COVID has made it 10 times harder, right? So recruitment may be an area that you want to improve. Um, fundraising may be an area that you want to improve. Um, it may be, you know, member engagement, like we, you have great stuff, but you have great events, but not a ton of people show up to, to each speaker or to each community service event. It's kind of a trickle in, trickle out group. All of those are fair things to call out and say, hey, this is a weakness for us and we want to improve on this. On the other side of the SWOT analysis, we have opportunities and threats. And these are external factors that impact your ability to operate as a chapter, either positively opportunities or negatively as a threat. Now, remember, external to the chapter still means that it includes the fraternity as a whole, right? So external to Gamma Sigma is still Psi or external to Psi chapter is still central office or the national fraternity or the province or the region. And so there can be opportunities and threats that come from within the fraternity, but outside of your personal chapter. So opportunities might be things like partnerships or recruits. Recruits are a fabulous opportunity. They're an opportunity for us to diversify in areas that we need knowledge within our chapter. They're also an opportunity to bring new blood and new ideas into a chapter, right? Um, partnerships. It might be that uh, the, the um, Alpha Chi Omega chapter on campus is really into the Red Cross blood drives and they're interested in partnering because that's a national, um, that's a national focus for both organizations or it might be that you have a Ronald McDonald house in town and that's an awesome partnership opportunity for you to enhance your community service program, right? Then we have threats um, and threats are gonna be things like competing organizations. If you have AK Scion campus and they've knocked recruiting out of the park the last couple of semesters and you've been struggling, 
that's a threat. That's something that's, you know, taking away opportunities and that you want to kind of avoid or, or thwart and get better about facing. Um, another common one is misinformation. Uh, a, chapter's, a chapter's reputation on campus can be a big threat to them as, as an organization. So making sure that you know, you're, you're managing um, that social media risk, that, that uh, marketing risk, as well as, and, and managing your brand, as well as um, addressing you know, risk management and those other things to avoid those threats. So we've analyzed chapter ops. Now we're ready to set those, those goals, right? We're ready to set those things that we want to accomplish as a chapter for the semester. So I promised you earlier, we would talk a little bit more about SMART goals. Um, I, I really should have you guys turn on your camera and ask you, um, but just quickly in the chat, give, uh, give me a yes if you already know about SMART goals or a no if SMART goals are new to you. We'll see, we'll see if this is how deep I should go into this. All right, Tyler, I see the chat okay. flashing. What have I got? I was say, look, looking like a pretty resounding yes. Okay, awesome, great. All right, so you guys know that SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So. We're going to jump right into some examples of SMART goals that chapters can set. So one SMART goal that you might set is to be on track for chapter recognition in CMP at the end of the semester. You would set that goal in the fall, um, or you would set the equivalent in the spring would be achieve chapter of recognition in CMP for the fiscal year, right? So they're specific in that you're saying, this is what I'm gonna do, right? I'm gonna be chapter recognition. Um, they're measurable in that we, we measure CMP and we know whether or not you've met that mark of chapter recognition. It's achievable because every chapter within the fraternity has the resources and the support to be a chapter of, of recognition, um, to, you know, as long as you execute those resources. Um, it's relevant because being a chapter of recognition has a direct impact on membership engagement, has a direct impact on uh, whether or not folks leave the fraternity, right? That attrition rate that we talked about under membership engagement in the national strategic plan. And it's time bound because it's end of the semester or fiscal year, right? So it's a SMART goal. Um, a couple of others that you might use, recruiting 10 new members with at least nine successfully completing the pledging process each semester. Decreasing chapter attrition by 25% for the school year. So if last year you had to trial out four brothers, this year you wanna trial out a maximum of three. Um, having five brothers attend the 2021 Grand Chapter Congress. That's a great one for y'all to, to put in now, right? You got, you got five months, we can do it. All right, now that we've got those SMART goals, it's time for us to populate those strategic plans. Um, I'm gonna jump over to Word and share some templates with you guys that you'll get in an email from Tyler, um, hopefully tomorrow or, or later this week. Um, but these templates are built to help you populate the strategic plan on the hub and help you think beyond uh, beyond those, those boxes to what you want to do as an officer to support the goals of, of your chapter. Um, and I'll, I'll just read this little quote on the right-hand side quick. Uh, by writing down your goals, you are 42% more likely to achieve them. People who write down their goals and take the time to document them have a stronger um, a stronger follow-through process, right? Like it, it's more ingrained in your brain and your putting actions towards that, towards that goal from the very beginning. All right, so I'm gonna take a look what chapter officers we've got here. Looks like we've got a VPCO, VPPA. All right, got a couple of VPCOs, VP finance. Okay, good, good mix here. So I'm gonna pull up VPCO to get us started and then I'll pop over to VP finance and VPSA. If I missed your officer title, shout it out in the in the chat for me so I can make sure I pull up your strategic plan. And you will get um, 
you will get all of these, all of the strategic plans for, um, for the, there's one for every uh, role in the, in the chapter. So having attended tonight, you'll get the full pack and you can share with the rest of your executive committee. All right, so we're gonna start with VPCO. This is, um, and they all look pretty similar. I can't get to it because it's behind. I can't get to it because it's behind the. All right, they look pretty similar. Um, you're gonna start off with the semester that you're looking at, and then what are your goals as as VPCO for the semester, right? Um, you're gonna indicate which. CMP goal, the chapters after. You'll notice that it says with president here, um, just a couple of little guidelines. Anything that's for recognition has an asterisk and anything for excellence has a double asterisk to help you um, plan accordingly, plan your actions accordingly. Your officer report submission dates, you're just gonna fill those in so you know what they are as a reminder. Um, your meeting minutes submitted, uh, you're gonna commit to yourself how many days after the, the meetings you're gonna submit these to the hub. In theory, they just need to be submitted by June 15th, but it's a heck of a lot easier uh, to support chapters uh, as a DD, and, and it's a heck of a lot easier on you as VPCO if you submit them on a regular basis. Um, so just make a commitment to yourself when they're gonna go. Um, and then you'll see, right, local business items for you to, to make commitments again your chapter communication plan, CMP review, and then your, your signatures at the bottom. Um, the theory, right, of all of these strategic plans is to think about the things that are required for accreditation and the things that make us uh, strong as a chapter. Chapter best, best practices for, for chapter operations are gonna be included in each of these, these forms. My VPCOs, any questions on your form before I jump over to uh, VPF. We keep an eye on the on whether or not the chat flashes. All right. Nope, nothing coming through, Noel. Okay, go over to VPF. Um, so, Vice President of Finance, similar similar setup, right? Similar functionality here. Um, you're going to put in your goals. You've got your dues roster date and your national dues payment date to help you align as to what those are. You should always know what those are, even though you're filling out the strategic plan in um, December for the spring or in June for the following fall, you should still know what those dates are because you know when school starts, you know when, when the dues are gonna be due as a result. Um, your initiation date should be sent, should be set. And so you should know your initiation fee payment date, et cetera. Um, calculating these things out ahead of time is going to make you that much more prepared when you come in in the fall and you don't have to rework all, all of this information. And then your budget, you're just going to attach that, right, so that you've got it for your chapter records. Um, what your local dues are, what the due date is for your local dues, the budget summary, um, fundraisings and sponsorship, potential sponsors. This is just a space for you to brainstorm. Who do we want to, to look at to help us out? Um, again, chapter recognition items are asterisks. Um, you've got your fundraising report. If you're a chapter of excellence, having that travel fund set up, having that chapter leadership fund donation. Your seasonal requirements, if it's fall, make sure your tax form submission gets in. If it's spring, your annual financial review is due. Uh, your pledge manual order, you'll see that this is with VPPE. And so any VPPEs on the call uh, or watching the webinar, it's included in your, uh, your template as well. Your badge order, and then again, your signature. Um, sometimes we have a separate chair of fundraising, so I broke this out into two pieces. But as <clears throat> VPF, you are also responsible for fundraising in most chapters. Uh, and so again, your, your fundraising goals for the semester, and then an opportunity to just put down at a high level, what are your events? Um, sometimes we think, well, you know, I, I can plan that in the fall. Um, yeah, you can in theory, but it's that much, if you, if you plan it out now, you have that much more time in the fall, right? 
um, and we ask you to, to put a date to it and put some, some thought to what you're going to be doing so that your fundraising committee can be executing what you planned the semester before and your events can be that much crisper, that much cleaner, that much more prepared. You have time to tell your alumni what's going on. Um, you have time to build those critical partnerships. So as much as you can, uh, make sure that you're planning for the next semester and executing the plans this semester. Just a, just a strong best practice for our chapters. Don't feel like you have to fill in all of these events. It's just a template. Use it as you need to, leave things blank if, if they don't apply to you. Um, and feel free to send feedback to make the, the template better for the future as well. All right, um, I believe we had a VPSA on, so I'm gonna pull that one up and I know I've got a chancellor on and then we will jump back to the PowerPoint and finish off. But there is, as I mentioned, one of these templates for every officer and you will get a copy um, of the full pack from, from Tyler and I welcome any feedback that you have to make them better. Um, so VPSA, a little bit different, right? We're gonna have an education plan around Delta Sigma Pi's scholarship and COI programs and how are you gonna do that? And then how are you gonna encourage folks to apply? What is your plan to make sure that brothers are executing on those opportunities? Recognition, same thing. How are you going to make sure that brothers are encouraged to share their accomplishments? It might be brother of the week. It might be shout outs. It might be whatever your chapter does today that you want to, to build upon or um, an idea from another chapter that you want to install. Um, how will the accomplishments be promoted to the university in your community? Whether that's a press release, whether that's a regular touch base with uh, the business school dean to just drop him and e him or her an email and say, hey, this is what Delta SIGs have accomplished in the last month. Wanted to let you know, look forward to seeing you at our next event, which is XYZ. Um, all of those, those things are great. Make sure you write it down, right? Include it for yourself. Make a commitment to yourself that these are the things I'm going to do in this officer position to support us as a chapter. Um, nominating your chapter COI, what, day do you, what meeting are you going to do that at? What's the general meeting date? And then make sure you get it submitted on CMP. Set a date for yourself that you're going to get that submitted before October 15th. Um, chapter awards, what awards are you going for, right? Who are you going to have write the letters? What date are you going to ask them to write them? Yes, awards are due in June, but please be working on them all year, right? Please be working on your write-ups. Please be thinking about who you're going to ask to support you um, so that you can, you can win them. You can bring those back to your chapter, to your university, uh, and make sure that you get recognition for all of your hard work. We do amazing things with our collegiate chapters and we want to make sure at the national level that we're recognizing your work. And then finally, at the um, uh, chapter of excellence option, your leadership foundation presentation. In partnership with your vice president of professional activities, go ahead and set a date um, and a location and, and any materials that you need for that. Um, and then any, any scholarships that you want to share with brothers above and beyond Delta SIG. I know Cy has an amazing Google spreadsheet of all sorts of awesome opportunities and I believe Gamma Sigma has a similar document. Um, and so making sure that we're telling brothers about those opportunities and getting those, those dollars into the hands of our brothers is a, is a great function of our VPSAs. And then finally, I'll pull up Chancellor. Gonna be the last one I look at, guys. Right? As as Noel is pulling that up, I just want to um, make a note that there is no the there is no strategic plan form in the hub for a vice president pledge education. Their strategic plan form is the pledge education form. Yes. Uh, that doesn't mean that there isn't still strategic things to be planned by the BPPE. <laughs> Right, yes, and these templates go above and beyond what's what's called for in the hub. So that's a good call out. Um, yeah, BPPs definitely make sure that, that you're following the, the program and not adding to it um, in its current form. Um, our chancellor, right, we've got our goals for the semester, um, making sure that we're reviewing our bylaws and our policies and procedures, 
And then your ritual team meetings. Um, in most chapters, your chancellor is going to be responsible for your ritual team. In some chapters, it's it's a separate committee. And if that's the case, please work with that committee chair. Um, but make sure that you know when you're going to meet and how you're going to prepare so that your initiation can be clean um, and, and a and a really great first impression for our new brothers. Um, if you're planning to have brothers memorize the pledge ceremony, make sure that, that you plan for that, that you commit that on paper um, and tell them that you're expecting that from them. Uh, make sure your bylaws have been updated, that your policies and procedures have been updated and, re and reviewed, et cetera. Um, your badge order date, when does that need to, to happen? Uh, your initiation date, your initiation report, making sure that that gets in, and then your risk management event, right? So again, um, just, a, just a planning template. Don't feel like you have to use it, but hopefully this brings you, um, brings you some, some focus and some support as you're building uh, the action items that support your strategic plan and, and your goals as, as a chapter for the semester. Any questions before I jump back to the PowerPoint? Any questions on the templates or any other templates that you want to see? Do you have a template for the president? I sure do. Yeah. So the president's template um, sets the expectation of which level of CMP you're gonna you're gonna reach and you'll also notice that the goals there's a couple more uh, bullet points to fill in um, you're look and and you're looking at what are your chapter awards goals right in in partnership with the VPSA which ones are you going for so that you can keep your focus on that your officer report needs to be submitted and then your meeting minutes um, again this is something that, that typically happens in conjunction with the VPCO, uh, but if you're going to go for chapter of excellence, you'll want to make sure that that's being um, accomplished. And then events, right? How many events are you planning for the semester? How many does that leave for the year? Uh, making sure that you're not overloading one semester or the other. What are your conference attendance goals? How many brothers are going to go to lead and how are you going to encourage them to attend? How many brothers are going to go to GCC and how many and how are you going to encourage them to attend? Any committees that you want to create, special committees, uh, you might have an anniversary committee. Make sure that you state out a committee purpose so that that committee has a direction and a responsibility that they can live up to. Um, and then who's the chair of that committee? Uh, meetings with college and university officials. Um, again, this is not something that's in the hub strategic plan, but it's a best practice as a chapter to make sure that you're really putting your, your best foot forward and talking with those stakeholders that we, that we spoke of earlier. And then um, doing the strategic plan review. So are all the officers strategic plans complete? They need to be in by December 15th for the spring and by June 15th for the fall. Um, if you are going for chapter of recognition or chapter of excellence, make sure that you know which options you're pursuing and that those are accounted for in your officer strategic plans. And then share this with your district director so they know how to support you as you move forward in the, in the next semester. Um, as a DD, I always say we have two roles that we play. The first and, and the most important in my mind is making sure that the goals that you set as a chapter, an executive committee, and individual brothers are supported and that we remove any roadblocks in the way um, to helping you connect with other chapters, uh, connect with where you're going to move to from an, alum, from an alumni chapter perspective after school, accomplishing those, those individual um, leadership development and professional goals and your chapter goals. That's our primary responsibility. That secondary responsibility is that risk management side and making sure that we're a strong uh, representative from the national fraternity to make sure that we're protecting our badge and protecting uh, our fraternity as a whole. Um, but the only way that, that we can fulfill that first purpose, the purpose that we love to fulfill of supporting your goals is by knowing what they are. So please, please share um, at a minimum this template with your district director, if not all of them, so that we, we can support you along the way. Any other templates that you want to see or any other questions on the templates? All right, I'm gonna jump back over to the PowerPoint. 
Okay, so we've populated our strategic planning templates and we've populated the hub, which means now we get to actually do the real work, right? Now we get to operate in a way that helps us succeed in that strategic plan. Um, the first way we're gonna do that is by utilizing our resources. I will say this until the day, the day that I the day that I die. Brothers are our absolute greatest resource in this fraternity. So utilize them. Make sure that you have strong functioning committees within your chapter. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't yet, make sure that you watch Brennan Fetter's motivation webinar on Delta Sig University. He does a phenomenal job explaining how um, every brother in the chapter should have a role and gives you some great examples of what those roles might be within your chapter. Make sure that you're utilizing your alumni and your faculty brothers as well. Um, we want to help. There are thousands of alumni across the country who are eager to serve as speakers, to, to review your books, um, your, financial, your financial audit, we can help you with that, to just bounce ideas off of, uh, to come back to homecoming, to support you and your fundraisers. Please make sure that, that you're utilizing us. Make sure that you're doing event reviews and recaps as well. Um, I have an event planning form in a similar template that I'll send out as part of the, the toolkit. Um, and that form gives you a great space to do a recap of each event. And then that becomes part of your chapter documentation for transitions and to move forward as a chapter. And then remember, slow and steady wins the race. You don't go from zero to 60. Um, you don't go from being a small startup to being a Fortune 500 company overnight. Spread your requirements out, make slow and steady progress towards your chapter goals, and push yourselves to, to go further and further every semester that you're a brother and encourage the brothers that come behind you to do the same. So that over time, your chapter just becomes stronger and stronger. They, those events get cleaner, they, they are higher caliber, the quality of your, your recruits increases. All of those things help us as a fraternity become stronger. Um, spreading those requirements out allows you to provide consistent value to the members of your chapter and your community. Um, if in the fall, all you do is the items for accreditation, it's really hard to stick everything in to become a chapter of excellence in the spring. You can do it, and kudos to those of you who are, who are pushing for it, but it's a lot easier if you spread those requirements out and make sure that you, um, you're having balanced semesters for, for your membership and for the communities that you serve. And then finally, make sure you're tracking your progress. Um, this is something that you know, my Gamma Sigma, you guys have heard me say this, um, my, the chapters I work with hear me say this all the time, but your VP, VPCO report should include what's been completed towards those, those chapter goals, what needs to be done this week or between now and the next meeting, and then what needs to be done between the next meeting and two meetings from now, right? Give brothers a sense of what's coming so that they can be supported, engaged, and want to, to weigh in. Um, your officer reports similarly should say XYZ event is coming up and that's part of our strategic plan to achieve chapter recognition or we have, you know, X number of applications to, to be part of the chapter, which is X number short of our goal for the semester so that we can choose a really strong quality pledge class. Um, what's on track, what's at risk and what needs intervention. These are things that we talk about in corporate America on a regular basis. Um, as a project manager, I have to give a status report <laughs> every uh, Friday on every one of my projects. And it's, it's easiest to talk about things as this is on track, this is at risk, this needs help. And then we're able to pitch in and, and get the right resources in place to make that happen. Um, so, um, I am running tight on time, um, but I do want to encourage you all to practice this a little bit, um, and then you can, you can do this again with your executive committees or just with your full chapter, um, but, but let's practice a little bit. Using the chat function, uh, let's do a mini SWOT. So think about your chapter and think about a strength of your chapter just the first word that comes to mind, a weakness of your chapter, again, first word that comes to mind, an opportunity for your chapter, first word that comes to mind, and a threat to your chapter, the first thing that comes to mind. And go ahead and, and pop that in the chat. I'll give you 60 seconds to work on that.
Do, 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 do. Brother Balmer says I need a Jeopardy theme song going here for you guys. Do, 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 do. All right, I didn't see the chat flash. Anybody got ideas out there? Diversity, commitment, community service, misinformation. I love it. All right. Okay. So we got a mini SWAT in there from Cleary, Phiomega. Okay. So now that you've got your mini SWAT written down or popped into the chat, let's think about a, a chapter goal. Um, just one chapter goal. Pick one of the fraternity strategic pillars, right? member engagement, membership growth, membership education, or organizational excellence. Pick one of those uh, strategic pillars and write a chapter goal that aligns to that strategic pillar. So write a SMART goal that aligns to that strategic pillar. You can steal one from earlier in the presentation, that's allowed. Strategic pillars, membership engagement, membership growth, membership education, member education, excuse me, um, and organizational excellence. All right, and then you're gonna take that goal and you're gonna break it down into a couple of action items that you can, you can execute. So maybe your goal was to send five brothers to Grand Chapter Congress this summer, okay? Um, action item number one might be we're gonna we're going to educate everyone on what Grand Chapter is um, and why you should still go if it's virtual. Uh, item number two might be to to poll the chapter as to who's thinking about going, right? And then item number three might be to to uh, have a fundraiser or have. Um, a, a get together for for those brothers who are interested in attending to support them in financially being able to to attend grand chapter all right so you've got your action items broken down and then think about one thing one thing in your chapter that you would change in terms of your operations to support that goal to support those action items that you created So guys, this is a this is a very small exercise, right? To and a very uh, rushed exercise to get you thinking about how to plan strategically and how how to execute um, strategic planning in your chapter. Uh, but this is exactly what the fraternity is about. It's about research and practice, making sure that you're building the skills that you want to have as you enter the professional uh, the professional workforce and in your post college careers. Um, and this is a simple way to, to practice strategic planning and practice goal setting um, so that you have that, that in your back pocket as you kick off your career. All right. So thank you for attending. Um, we've got a couple of minutes left. I, I don't have a hard stop, so I'm happy to hang out. Um, it's open Q&A time. And again, thank you for attending. Uh, I'll throw up my contact information as I know it's getting late for some folks and some folks have class uh, and those sorts of things. So I'll throw up my contact information, but if there are any questions or feedback, um, I certainly welcome that at this time. So if anybody's got questions for Noelle, please feel free to uh, unmute and turn the camera on and, or drop something in the chat. Uh, looks like Lisa, you have a uh, thought. I do. Hi, Noel. Hey, Thank Lisa. you so much for your presentation. Um, so I was just curious, I mean, in a chapter's perspective, would we have a similar mission as to the national office or yeah. would we have our own mission statement? Yeah. That's a great question. Um, so personally, I've always looked at it as 
uh, stealing the mission, right? The mission of the fraternity is our purpose and every brother is bound to that purpose. Um, so I've always looked at that as, as one and the same. I think you could in theory take the, the vision statement a little bit. Um, and instead of saying be America's foremost professional business fraternity, you could make that specific to Cleary. Um, but I would, I would encourage you to, to keep that purpose, that thing that binds all of us and binds all of our uh, chapters in terms of the, the things that are the same about our operations. I would encourage you to keep that from a mission perspective. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Similarly with the values, right? The values are gonna be the five values that we have at the fraternal level. And those are things that um, bind all of us as well, so. Tyler, it looked like you were going to jump in. I was, I was just going to, you know, throw it out there for any other last minute uh, questions. Not seeing any in the chat, not seeing anyone unmuting. Um, so you have, uh, again, on your screen is Noel's contact information in the next couple of days. Um, you should be getting uh, the toolkit. Uh, from central office if as you participated this evening. Um, I want to thank Noelle for her time uh, in creating these and uh, presenting them to everyone and sharing them amongst all of you uh, here in the next couple of days. So thank you for that, Noelle. And um, please continue to look uh, on uh, dsp.org slash events for additional topics and programs that we have coming up. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you brothers, have a great evening.